Hey parents, today's show will be chock full of tips and suggestions, or in a nutshell, what we call the best practices for introducing kids to deer hunting. Follow these and you'll have a safe and fun hunt whether your hunter gets a deer or not. Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead and you know Rich Fuller. Thanks for joining me today. Great to be here. You know, Rich, over the years, we've had the pleasure of being in the blind with a lot of first time deer hunters, kids, and, and there's nothing better, is there? It's, it's always special <laughs> uh, and we're gonna show you know, another example of that later in today's show, uh, Eli Bartholomew, which is the son of Eric Bartholomew, mm -hmm. who is our uh, big game biologist. It was his first uh, deer hunt and he was successful and that's one happy hunter. You bet. Well, you know, over the years, you and I uh, have uh, acquired a lot of tips of how to go about taking a first time deer that's hunter right. out. And today's show is going to kind of focus on that. We're going to uh, share with you some of our tips along with some of the advice that we acquired from biologists and game wardens and other parents about how to introduce a, a, a young hunter to, to the lifestyle of hunting. And today we're going to be sharing not only a lot of tips, but some advice. Let's talk about first about some of the guns that we've got. Here. You know, Todd, you could, you could talk about, you know, and there's differences <laughs> of opinion when it comes to, to deer rifles and so forth, but generally speaking, and this is from input from a lot of our game wardens, generally speaking, for a first time youth deer hunter, we're talking about a 22 caliber center fire rifle with somewhere in the neighborhood of the minimum, which is 55 grains on the bullet size, up to say 120. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the rim fire 22 rifles. No. That criteria includes lots of different rifles and the first one here is yours. You bet, this camo gun is, is mine. It's a 223. Uh, I've got it sighted in with a 55 grain. So that right. would be considered right. what we would advise as being the minimum of what we would start a young hunter with. Right. This one here is uh, uh, 257 Roberts, which uses a 117 grain bullet, <laughs> which is... Uh, I'm glad uh, I'm not reloading that. <laughs> yeah. uh, this one over here is a 243. That's probably the most popular sure. uh, youth uh, model deer rifle in Oklahoma, a 243, which uses about a 95 grain bullet. Suffice to say that uh, everybody has their favorites, but these right here are gonna have a minimum recoil, mm -hmm. and that's important with young hunters. Sure, and there's a lot of choices out on the market there for is, you. There is, and, and, and getting a gun fit to the right size of the, of the youth hunter, the stock size is very important, but whenever you're introducing kids to deer hunting, probably the first step for lots of us, I know it was for me, teaching my son, you've taught other kids how to hunt is out at the shooting range. That's right. Okay. All right. Hey, George, Eli, you guys want to go get the 22 and do a little more shooting. 30 yards out. Where this is comfortable down here. Because if you ain't comfortable up here, down here, you're not going to be up here. Okay? You put one in the chamber yet? No. Okay. Your scope may be off just a little bit. Okay? So why don't you pull up just a little bit. Okay. 
At three? Yeah. Okay. All right. Remember, slow, slow squeeze on that trigger. You jerk the trigger, you're going to miss where you want to hit it. You kind of sprayed them all over, but that's why it's important that you hold still, breathe slow, and squeeze the trigger. Safety off. Yep. Okay. Remember. Yes. Good shot, man. There we go. So right here's the chest, right? And here you can see, I didn't do a very good job, but on the shoulder, you'll see kind of a bump on their back. Mm -hmm. So if you'll go right right below that, and then the center of their body, you want to kind of shoot mid right center of their body and right there behind the hump of their shoulder, okay? So you and that gets the heart and the lungs, which you want a quick, clean kill. No, Rich, I really like the way that you ramped up the progression from a BB gun up to a deer rifle. And that was uh, very deliberate on our part, you know, starting off with a BB gun, uh, putting the hearing protection, the eye protection on these boys, even though it's a BB gun, mm -hmm. it gets them used to that idea, sure. uh, get some shooting, and then, you know, going up to a 22, it's louder, a little bit of recoil, a little more recoil than a BB gun, certainly. Before you start them off cold, with, mm -hmm. a, with a full-size deer rifle, and it works. It, it gets them into that, into that mode of getting used to the loud sound of the gun, getting used to the recoil, and so it's not so intimidating. You it's bet. starting off cold. You know, uh, we've gone through the shooting preparation, and now let's take a look, Todd, at something the, these boys are having a really good time <laughs> at doing, and that is picking out their spot to go hunting. Hey guys, check this out. Look at this deer trail here. It looks like they're, they come off that hill over here and come out into this field to feed. Let's go over here around the corner and see if we can find a spot to set up a blind. Yeah, good flat. Let's see. I bet they're going to come out here and stop for a little bit and check things out. We'll step out here in this field. Let's look around for a, a good flat spot to set things up. Yeah. Well, there's some brush up here on this hill a little bit. Let's check this out. Well, this is a good looking spot, ain't it? Yeah, I think so, Mike. Let me get up here and clear some of this stuff out of the way. Oh, hey, George, you got those loppers? Yep. Thank you, sir. That make it look like it's just a big square sitting up here. Kind of have, a, make it look like a big bush instead. Well, hopefully, in about a week, when we come back to hunt, those deer won't know that it's there and we can be waiting in there for them to come out here. So guys, remember when you're shooting, I realize you're going to be a little excited, and that's okay. But if you can make try to get calm, and then hold your crosshairs real still on your deer, hey. remember to squeeze that trigger. If you jerk the trigger, you're going you're probably going to miss. But if you just give it a, good, a nice, good squeeze, and it surprises you when you go off, it's your best shot right there. Yep, and remember to take a deep, relaxing breath when you do that. Kind of help calm you down while you're getting ready to shoot, okay? Okay. George. We'll Remember that heart way. lung is the best shot.
here at Lake Murray today, and specifically Marietta's Landing. What we are doing is painting a boat ramp stencil at numerous locations around the lake. The goal of this is to remind boaters that they need to do their part to um, reduce the uh, risk of transferring aquatic nuisance species from one lake to another. In this case, we are asking our boaters to clean, drain, and dry their, their uh, boat and equipment that they used on the lake before they go to another lake. For our viewers that aren't aware of what zebra mussels are, these are what they look like. This was uh, a log that was pulled from Lake Murray just a few minutes ago. Uh, this was up on the bank. These are, are, are dried out and dead, uh, but they'll just, they'll just um, countless uh, numbers of these zebra mussels in the lake. And what we're wanting to do is prevent the spread of these to other, to other lakes. These are very prolific. Um, they'll produce lots and lots of larvae each year and it's very easy to move these from one lake to another, both by transporting the adult forms such as these or just in water that is transported um, in the live well, the, the, the bilge, the, the bait bucket, anything that can have drops of water in it and move around the, the villagers or the larval form of these. Whether you're a hunter or fisherman or just enjoy viewing Oklahoma's wildlife, you too can help protect our valuable natural resources. If you see a wildlife violation or have knowledge of one, please contact your local game warden or you can report it anonymously by calling 1-800-522-8039. Game wardens in Oklahoma and everywhere need your help. Oklahoma's free hunting days are coming up the first weekend here in September. And as most of you all know, that also corresponds with the opening of dove season. Again this year, dove season looks like it should be pretty good. Regulations are still the same, uh, still 15 bird bag limit. So take this opportunity to introduce someone new to the sport of hunting and enjoy some Oklahoma dove hunting. Did you know that you can get a migratory bird harvest information program permit for free anytime at wildlifedepartment.com? You are watching Outdoor Oklahoma. Find out more news of the week at wildlifedepartment.com. Todd just watching that why why did we miss out on pop-up blinds when you and I were starting off deer hunting I know it aren't they great they are terrific you know they provide so many other aspects to a hunt there's, there's plenty of room to move around which kids are prone to do That's right. uh, you can take snacks you don't have the safety issue of being up in an elevated stand and when Emily was going with me when she was little, she was known to take a nap right there on the yeah, floor. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you're out of the elements and, uh, you know, being up in an ele elevated stand, uh, you know, can be pretty darn chilly at times and uh, you, all, you don't have to worry about the fall restraint systems hunting from an elevated stand. Mm -hmm. that, that kind of stuff can come later. You bet. You know, I hunt in pop-up blinds the majority of my time too now. Well, they're, they're no question, uh, they've gotten so sophisticated and, and, and great. The quality of them is great. And as one of the other aspects to that, Todd, which I thought was great, this is an opportunity for the, for the, for the adults to involve the kids, mm -hmm. have them get out there, interpret some of this deer sign. You mm -hmm. know, where do you think we ought to set this blind up? Yeah. And it's kind of a little bit like building a fort. Sure, yeah, so you watch is. that. Yeah, you know, where they, they, they <laughs> clip and brush in the blind and all mm -hmm. that. And uh, what kid doesn't like to build a fort? Man? Oh, absolutely. And any time that the kid can have some uh, part or role in the decision-making process, it becomes more of their hunt and not just following their parents' lead on everything. Great tips and strategies, but I'm ready to go hunt. Me too. Well guys, it's 6.15. We got shooting light in about 45 minutes. We better head up to our blinds, we think. Ready? You guys ready?
anything, and it was darn cold this morning. What do you say, Eli? Let me, let me pull your butt off. <laughs> I think we made it back to the, uh, up there to the base camp at, with eight hand warmers in my pockets from trying to keep Eli warm. So we packed it up and started walking back and saw a few deer off in the distance and tried to get set up on them, but they didn't get more than about 200 yards, not 200 yards away, I guess. And so we let them go and got up to the other, other field up there and there were some deer on it. So we, we did a pretty good sneak, got around on them and then tried to get set up and something that spooked them. You got her. You got her. I got her. I'm watching her. I'm watching her. She's running over there on the hill. You hit her. You hit her. I think it was a good hit. Yeah, you hit her in the right front. Uh, you hit her in the right front leg. <sighs> good job. Good job. <laughs> that was excellent patience, right? Remember where she was standing when you shot her? Let's go look right there, okay? Oh yeah, that's a good doe, buddy. <laughs> good job, Eli. Good job, buddy. Really? <laughs> good job. Oh, good job, Eli. You did a good shot. Real good. Didn't make it very far, did she? Here, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll pull her out this way. There we go. Good job, Eli. Let's see what you did here. Perfect. Look at that. You hit her right there. Through her body. Good job, bud. Way to go. You know, Rich, when I first started taking kids hunting, I was guilty of trying to, I guess, push my own agenda a little too hard with them because I wanted them to succeed. I sure. wanted to bring a deer home. And yeah. after an hour, most kids, first time hunters, they're, they're spent. They're ready to call it That's up. That's right. Quit. We, we, we recommend, you know, keep your first trips very short. If your, your young hunter is cold, wet, tired, or hungry. <laughs> Fix it. Fix it or <laughs> call it quits for that day and go back and then come back another time. That's right. You only have one chance to make a first impression of what hunting's all about with a new hunter.
you gotta you gotta infuse fun into it, and uh, and that means communicating with that young hunter. Hey, you still having fun? You want to keep going? It's okay if you say no. We can go back to the camp, or sure. we can go back to the truck. Uh, I don't want you to. We can do something else if you're tired, or we want to do, go do something else. We can come back and hunt later. Exactly right. Well, you know, Todd, after Eric and uh, Eli were successful, that's not the end of the hunt. Absolutely not. <laughs> because uh, as, as we well know, uh, you have to process that deer, and that is something that we recommend uh, adults involve their children with. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're not doing all the field dressing or the butchering of the animal, but you need to get that uh, child involved with that process uh, so that they can understand things and you can turn that into kind of a little miniature anatomy lesson. And they don't even know they're learning something. That's right. They're having fun. You bet. Oh, wow. Those are the lungs. Looks like healthy lungs to me. Okay. Here, pull down a little further. Very good. All right. Let me get this cut off. We'll be... You know, Rich, we want to um, also point out that it's a great practice to involve the kid in the preparation of meals with, with the oh, venison. Oh, you bet, you bet. You know, one of the first deer my son shot, we made some der uh, deer jerky. He took it to school, shared it with his buddies in the cafeteria. It was great. Uh, you can do that with jerky. You know, take it to your uh, ball practice and share it with your teammates. It's a great, it's portable. And, you know, other kid-friendly venison dishes usually involve venison burger. You got chili, sure. sloppy joes, tacos, things that kids like to eat. You That's bet. a great start off uh, as far as, uh, you know, preparing venison meals. That's great. And, you know, one of the most uh, important aspects of today's show that we want to point out is the fact that Eli took a friend with him. And that's, that's just really critical to um, not only Eli's future as a hunter, but obviously George's as well. You bet, you know, and that's something that a lot of adult deer hunters sort of overlook. They mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm getting my own child out there and I'm introducing deer hunting to my own child. Well, guess what? You might do that at age 10, 11 or so, but by 14, 15, most kids want to do stuff <laughs> with their buddies, sure. you know, and yeah. so, uh, they're, they're as socially connected now as ever with mm -hmm. Facebook and texting. So our recommendation, and the, the, if you've learned anything from today's show, we want to reinforce the idea of not only taking your uh, son or daughter on a hunting trip, introducing them to deer hunting, but have them invite one of their friends to go with you and one of their friends, adults uh, or parent, to come along as well. You bet. Now. When you take a kid hunting, many times you have the opportunity to do it over the course of two or three days. Oh yeah, that's, and, that's, and that's another real critical point. Oh yeah, you know, if, if you can establish like a deer camp. Now if a day trip's all you can do, then by all means do it. But, mm -hmm. but you know, establishing a, a multiple day trip uh, with a deer camp is, is really a, a, another great tip. You bet. Now if you'd like to review some of the tips we've talked about today, we've got a, a a great way to be able to do that we online. Do. Just go to our website, wildlifedepartment.com, look under the hunting tab, and look for the link that says best practices, turning today's kids into tomorrow's deer hunters. Well, that's great. You know, for Rich Fuller, I'm Todd Craighead. Thanks for joining us today. For all of us at your wildlife department, we hope that we see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.